Hey everyone, welcome back to the 100 videos of code. This one is video number two, and I wanted to talk to you all about creating and accessing hashes. Hashes are different from arrays in the sense that arrays only contain values. So right here for this array, you've got tomatoes, milk, 11, and Bob, and so on. They're only elements, only values. Hashes, on the other hand, consist of both a key and a value pair. You can think of it as like a dictionary where the keys are the words that you're looking for and the values are the description themselves. So let's begin here by creating a new hash called ABC1, which is gonna be just like a string of A. Now to assign a value, there are actually multiple ways of doing this, but the first one is by assigning with equals and the little arrow to the right, and then a value of one, Let's go with B as a value of two, and then C as a value of three. You can also do it this way. If I just rename this as two, you can assign B without the little arrow, but with a colon, or actually I can, I can assign A to a colon of one, to a value of one using a colon, and B colon two, and then C, colon three. So far we've been dealing with strings, but you can also deal with symbols, which tend to be much more efficient in terms of memory management because it occupies less space in your actual storage, so to speak. So ABC3 is gonna actually be colon and then A and then arrow one, the same thing with B here. So colon B, then arrow two, and then colon C arrow two. The other way of writing symbols would be by duplicating this down here, just writing ABC of four. Instead of putting a colon first, just gonna be the key and then the colon, then the space. And so B colon and then C colon. So this pretty much summarizes some of the, the ways of creating hashes. The two most use cases that you're gonna have as keys are strings and symbols. So let's just print this to the screen and see what happens. So just gonna be like puts ABC1 is equal to this interpolation of ABC1. And for the other ones, I'm just gonna copy them down below three other times and just rename the values. Whoops, that's two and then three and four. Then again, two and three and four, sweet. Now here on the right, on the terminal window, just gonna run the code by typing Ruby hashes. And there you go. You see that all of our hashes contain their values. You can see that the keys of a string would be the value of one and so on. But there's something weird happening here. The values, well actually the, the keys of ABC2 are not a string as we said it was here. They are symbols. What's happening? This is a mistake that I actually came across a few weeks ago when working on a project, is that if you try to assign a value to a string as being the, the key, we have a colon, Ruby is gonna interpret that as being a symbol, not a string. So that's very important to note there. I'm just gonna write a comment here so that you can really try to remember this. So uh, it's gonna be symbol, then value, and then top of here would be a string and a value. And the same down here for the symbol and value. Okay, cool. So as I said in the beginning of the video, there are many other different ways of creating hashes. And I actually set them down here just to save some time. So I'm just gonna cut them and paste them right here, uncomment them. And I'll actually just copy this as well and paste them right here and uncomment them. So what's happening here is similar to arrays where you can just create an array without anything inside it. For hashes, you start an empty hash with empty curly brackets. You can also do the same thing by typing hash.new. Both are gonna create an empty hash. And actually, let me just run the code so you can see everything 
on the screen. So as you can see here for ABC 5 and 6, the hashes are empty and from 7 to 9 you have this very same thing as you have here except that the keys are strings because the keys here are strings. So in the Ruby documentations they show you that you can also create hashes by using these three methods. The thing with this is it's, it can be a little bit confusing and I don't know exactly which use cases you choose to use this one in particular, which each key value pair inside these blue square brackets are enveloped in this pink square bracket, which is inside these other yellow square brackets. It's, I, I don't know exactly why would you do something like this ever, but maybe there is a use case for this. I don't know what, what it is. But of course, you can also type this as a symbol, either this way without the colon between both of them, and then B would be, oops, B just B, and then C will be C. Let me take this comma off, this comma out. Just like this, it's going to print the very same thing right here. Probably not what is happening. Syntax error, unexpected integer literal, expecting... Oh yeah, because this way I've got to have the little arrows here. That's the mistake there. So little arrows. Now it should be fine. Yep, there you go. So it changed from a string to a symbol. That's what we wanted. So if you try to do the very same thing here, just going like a colon this time without the comma, same thing here, B colon. If I can type, that would be great. And C without the comma. You run this again. You have an error. What's happening here? It's saying that all of this here is a key. So A with a value of one is actually the key, but the value is nil. I have no idea what's going on. I really thought that this was going to work normally as it did right here in the ABC7. I don't know why it's complaining with a nil value. Huh, that's something to explore later. But now you know. Now you know that it gives you a nil, a nil value. I guess that's pretty much it for creating an arrays then. So let's move on to accessing hashes. Just gonna cut this here, paste it to the top and uncomment. So let's, for this one, let's create a new hash code fruits, which is going to be equal to watermelon for the key, which is going to be a symbol. Let's assign a value of 4.99 and pairs, which are going to be 2.99. So the way that we would access each element of a hash would be by, let me put this on a string as well. So let's go like watermelon where melon will be the interpolation of fruits and watermelon. So even though the watermelon symbol here is inside square brackets, it doesn't mean that I'm accessing an array, right? Just remember this. This is just for getting the position of the actual elements inside the, the hash. And unlike arrays, hashes don't contain a uh, like an order of index positions. So like in this case, yes, watermelon would be in the first index position, but it doesn't follow this rule per se. Watermelon does not belong to index position zero specifically. So like if I try to go fruits of zero and I try to print this to the screen, it's just gonna give me watermelon, but not the value that I want, right? But Actually, let me try putting it like this. Yeah, it's not gonna work because even though watermelon would be in the zero index position, the value is not in another index position. It really belongs to that symbol, to the watermelon. So you can't necessarily access it using just indexing as you would with arrays. So the way to do this would be by passing the symbol of watermelon and when I print it to the screen, you can see that watermelon is now 499, which is what we wanted. So I'm just gonna duplicate this downwards and rename this to uh, pair, not to price, and pass in the pair. 
and you see that the results will be what we expected it to be, right? Now, there's another way that we can retrieve only the keys and only the values of a given hash. So let's go like put keys will be the fruits, the fruits dot keys and the values will be fruits dot values. And then when we print it to the screen, it's going to look like this. So actually, let me just add a new line to make this easier to see. So keys, watermelon and pear, and then values 499 and 299. And you can actually see that Ruby explicitly tells you that this is a symbol. If I were to change the watermelon symbol to a string, let me just get this off to a string. And I actually need to assign this using the arrow. This is going to retrieve the actual string of watermelon and then the symbol of pear, but the values don't change because, well, they weren't modified in any way. And that's pretty much what I wanted to show you in this video. Hopefully it was helpful to you in any ways. Let me know down in the comments if I left something out of it that you want to see in another video. And of course, I'm going to get even more in depth with both arrays and hashes in future videos, especially in regards to looping through them either individually or in an array of hashes scenario. But until then, I wish you have a great day and I'll catch you in the next video. See ya!